Say some demons here tonight. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Can somebody say hallelujah? I dare you. Yeah. Glory. Come on, let's say hallelujah one more. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. I shouldn't stop you from slaying some demons right now. You wrestle with them all the time. Come on, come on. Hey, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We, we honor the Lord tonight for being God. I thank him for being God. I know sometimes we just testify. God bless you with a house and he bless you with a car and he bless you with this. But I just want to thank him for being God. Only God could look at failure and see success. Oh, glory. Only God could look beyond our faults and see somebody that worked something in the kingdom. And so we want to thank him for being God. We want to honor the host pastor of this church, Ella Powell and First Lady Sister Powell and to all our pastors here tonight and to all our friends and to all of you God's children we greet you another time in the name of Jesus we're thankful again for another night in the house of God nobody forced me to come to church tonight I came to give God a free will offering amen I want to thank him. It's good to give God a free will offering. Uh, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Uh, if you've got to be forced to praise God, it's not accepted. Somebody got to beg you to praise God. It's not accepted. Amen. But the writer said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, can somebody think with me? And all he has done for me, my soul. Oh, Boshata. Kela Boshata. I don't care what I'm going through. When I think, I, I don't need to feel the Holy Ghost. When I think, oh, come on, come on, come. You don't even need the Holy Ghost to praise God. All the Bible said, let everything that help. Oh, good God from glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you sit beside somebody who don't praise God, tell him, excuse me. Uh, but any time now, I can say glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why when I get to church, I like to sit beside somebody who say glory like me. I like to sit beside somebody who say hallelujah like me. Ah, glory be to God. Come on, can somebody think of the goodness? Some of you should not be in church by now. You should have backslidden a long time ago. But when I think... Oh, good God from glory. Hallelujah. The devil came at me a lot of times to destroy me. I should have resigned. I should have left church. But I'm still here. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm still here. And there's no place to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm staying right here. <laughs> you better learn to live with me. There's no place to go. I'm staying right here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on, come on. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. We move into another dimension tonight. Uh, just to tell your neighbor who's sitting beside you, say any moment now, I may say hallelujah. You, you better be. <laughs> Glory be to God. Because we got some quiet apostolic. We're not dealing with those pious apostolic and sophisticated apostolic. But you ought to have been there. When the Lord saved me, you ought to be there. When he gave me. Oh, God. 
Glory, 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 glory. Oh, Lord. Ah, shut up. Touch somebody and say power. Touch your neighbor and say power. Ah, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I'm building my own fire. I don't want nobody else's fire. I'm building my own fire. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. You got to build your own fire. I'm coming, but do you know what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2? The Bible said, and the Lord God caused it not to rain. You know why? Because there was no man to till the ground. God's not going to waste his anointing if there's nobody to receive it. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Until you and I are in a right position, the Lord will not send the rain. When you see me saying glory, guess what I'm doing? I'm killing. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're honored to be here tonight. Just raise your hand and say amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. I bless the Lord. I bless the Lord. We bless the Lord for Evangelist Kevin and Deacon Bond and Van Dyer. Dwyer. Amen. Sister Vicky is still here. God bless you. Amen. Sister Aikman is still here with us. And we're just blessed to be back here this year again by the grace of God. I'm blessed to be here. Amen. And we just come to worship with you. Amen. And I do hope everybody understands. We're just here to worship. Amen. I'm not come with a new word that you have not heard. But the Bible said that the countenance, like iron sharpened iron, so is the countenance of one to the other. And we have moved into this new millennium to which I believe that God's people need to take another step, another dimension in God. Because sometimes we sit at the foundation not moving. Amen. And it's time to move higher. Uh, I'm tired of going to church and listening to the same rituals. Uh, come on, come on. Somebody start the service. Somebody read the Bible. Uh, we're getting tired of that now. We, we need to get into the into inner veil of God. Amen. Get out of these traditions and, uh, of men and move into God. For God. We need God to start interrupt our services. Glory be to God. And you may see us do some things that it is not normal, that you are not used to, but God is taking the church to a new dimension. Amen. Because God has got to marshal a new army for the mighty revival that is coming. How many of you know there's a wave of revival that is coming for the church? Amen. Many don't even know that. But when Adam sinned in the garden, he surrendered the title deed of earth to Satan. He has it for six days. And the end of the six days is about to close. And he's got to give it back to God. Come on, come on. He's got to give it back. And when he gives back the title deed to earth, to God, you're going to see a wave of revival. People are going to run to church and say, baptize me. I got a vision. Baptize me in Jesus' name. I want the Holy Ghost. You see folks sitting in church and don't want to cry out for the Holy Ghost? Well, you can sit there. Glory be. Just look what's happening in Israel right now. Everybody should be on the alert right now that we ain't got long to stay here. And I'm making sure I got the Holy Ghost. Not what somebody told me I got. I got it. Uh, glory, glory. Uh, some people just have a tongue, but I, I'm talking about Holy Ghost. Uh, Holy Ghost is more than a tongue. Uh, when you got the Holy Ghost, you got love. Uh, touch your neighbor and say, where's the rest of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> come on, come on. Where's the rest of it? Where, where is the rest of it? Tongues is just a part of it. Where is the rest of it? Oh, God. I feel the Holy Ghost already. I don't know about you. But where is the rest of it? Tongues is just about love, joy, meekness, temperance. Come on, come on. That's all the package to the Holy Ghost. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You got to fight your way into God now. Come on. How many of you know it's a fighting time now? You got to fight to go to church. You got to fight to praise God. You got to fight to be sanctified. You got to fight to stand up in church. You got to fight to get dressed. It's fighting time now. But guess what? I'm celebrating survival tonight. Hallelujah. You got to know how to survive. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you got to learn how to survive. Because there's going to come a time in your life you can't find nobody to pray for you. You can't find nobody to pray for you. You can't find nobody to encourage you. But all by yourself. Mm. You got to start singing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Good to be here. I'm going to ask Deacon Bond to come and greet the church. Come on. Deacon. Amen. It's so good to have him with us. He's the president of our men's fellowship department in Toronto. Please receive Deacon Bond in the name of the Lord. Come on, say hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So good to see all our pastors. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your support. God bless you. Will you stand with me to the second book of Samuel tonight? Amen. 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 Second Samuel chapter six. Amen. Amen. We're going to read verse 3 together. Share your Bible. Amen. Come on. Get your Bible this. Give your Bible to some. 2 Samuel 6 and verse 3. Amen. Share your Bible with someone. Amen. Brother Matthew, share your Bible. Okay. Somebody share. Wonderful. Amen. verse 3 together and they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadad that was in and Yuza and Ohio the sons of Abinadad drave the new cart verse 6 and when they came to Nacon's dressing floor Yuza put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen shook it. Mm. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Yusa, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. Verse 11, and the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Abedidim, the Gittite, three months, and the Lord blessed Abedidim and all his hosts hold. Holy Ghost, I really need you tonight. We really, yeah, shako, kora shatio, mako shatio, marabo shatio. Sit in us, Holy Ghost, tonight. Angels, take your position in this house right now. In Jesus' name. Let everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. You may be seated.
Oh, good God. Wonderful. That is my quite good to see you. God bless you. Good to see you all. God bless you. Good to see everybody. Good to see you. Amen. Allow me tonight to speak. We've come to a point in Christendom today that there is a clash in millennium. There is a clash in concepts. There is a clash in beliefs. There is a group that is saying, this is not what it is. And then there is another group saying, this is how I know it. And if you're going to be real with me tonight, you realize that we have a problem in the apostolic church today. Some is saying, let's get back to the axe church. And they're saying, let's get back to the original. Let's get back to the glory. Let's get back to where it used to be. I know of days when we move in church and we we didn't have all the luxury that we have. We didn't have all the artificial stuff that we have. Uh, but the glory moved. And you can't deny it. And, and I'm sure those of you who are back 20 years ago, back here, can look back and, and have a comparison as to what happened. Uh, that's not what it used to be 20 years ago. When we got to church, we didn't have to sing 10 songs to feel the power. We didn't have to do that. We, we walked in and we felt the power. Everybody who walked in feel the glory. There was a love. There was a bond. There was a fellowship. The devil has been successful in moving into a church and separate me from you and you from me. And we have not even yet identified the satanic move that is in churches today. Because once God, once the enemy separates me from you, Ella Peter King, we are weak. Can I talk to somebody here? Then? Once the devil moves in and, and, and brings a, a, a separation, uh, then there's some satanic force. There's some satanic hierarchy. You can't fight by yourself. Uh, you need the, 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 the corporate body to fight. No one man can take the whole of Birmingham or Wolverhampton. It takes a corporate body to come together and say, I bind the prince of Wolverhampton. Uh, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come. There is a prince in this area that no one assembly can take. It takes a coming together. That's why Jesus emphatically stated, he said, if you need the sport in a man's house, you first need to bind the strong man. You can't get the souls that is walking in Wolverhampton until you first bind the strong man of Wolverhampton. And so we, we come to a place now that we are wrestling because one thing that appalled me when I read in the book of Haggai, when the question was asked, is there any that knew the house in his first glory? Now, when you read that scripture, it will tell you that the old men mourn. The older generation rejoice. There was a mixed feeling. The younger rejoice because that's the best they have seen God. The older mourn because they knew there is a greater glory to what they saw now. Oh, good God from glory. Somebody need to take the glory of yesterday and bring it into today. Oh, good God. Somebody going to be upset with me, but I'm going to deliver it anyhow. You got to understand one thing. By the time David got to the throne, he had an interest in his heart that I must bring the ark back to Jerusalem. Now Saul reigned for 40 odd years. It never entered his heart to bring the ark to Jerusalem. 
But as soon as David got to the throne, he said, where is the ark of God? We need to restore true worship in Jerusalem. Oh, oh Hallelujah. But the problem, brothers and sisters, when the man decided to bring the ark home, there was no Levite that was able to tell him how to bring it back. All the Levites backslid. Come on, come on. All the high priests backslid. There was nobody to say, this is the order to bring the glory back. Come on, brothers and sisters. Oh, glory be to God. Now, you can always blame David for putting in a new cart. But where were the elders? Come on. Don't tell me the church is not the church. Show me. Come on, come on. Touch your neighbor and say, show me, show me. You can always tell me that's not what it used to be. But show me. Oh, glory be to God. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Do I have some holy people in here? We're always saying that's not what the church used to be. But show me. Where is the man? Where is the, the gentleman? Where is the mother? Where are the fathers to show this generation what the church used to be? If we're not careful, we preach love from this book and practice hate. Oh, glory be to God. Come on with me, somebody. So when David had nobody to show him how to bring the ark back to Israel, he looked over in the Philistine camp. And he saw the Philistine transport their gods and a cart. So he adopted the same principle. And the Bible said, and David set the ark of God upon a new cart. Come on. You know what I like about God? Is that God don't deal with some things that we pick up today from the Philistine camp. Oh, people, people run to, people run to places and they tell you, you want to get spiritual? Ten steps to become spiritual. Five steps to, to become in love. Five steps to do this and ten steps to do that. Jesus never practiced anything like that. He didn't tell you ten steps to get spiritual and ten steps to stay in love and, and ten steps to do that. He didn't practice anything. What Jesus gives you is that if you allow the Holy Ghost to control your innermost being if we submit ourselves to God and God have the power on the inside of your life and in your spirit there is nothing that you won't give up for God come on come on come on. you somebody gotta force you to do things and beg you to do things what we need we need a double portion of the anointing back in our tabernacle I know some of you may not accept the principle that I'm laying out for you tonight, but I don't care. I got to deliver what God said. You got to understand, if the Holy Ghost get on the inside of any person, I'm not talking about just a tongue. I'm not talking about just somebody trying to speak in tongues to, for somebody to say, well, you got it. I'm talking about Holy Ghost. When he get on the inside of that woman, she rang and said, come see a man. Jesus said, it shall be in your way springing up into everlasting that's the Holy Ghost I'm talking about I'm talking about the Holy Ghost that when you kneel down at your bedside it talks to you I'm talking about the Holy Ghost that when I sin it convicts me I'm talking about the Holy Ghost that when I don't talk to my brother when I kneel down to pray the Holy Ghost to stop praying reconcile with your brother but John said we have an unction from the Holy One oh glory be to God Hallelujah. What the anointing in you will teach you. It's a teacher. This Holy Ghost is more than just Echo Shanda. It's a teacher. 
it teaches me. When I do something wrong, it, it, it reproves me. Come on, come on. I don't know what kind you talk about. I'm talking about the kind that talks to me. My Holy Ghost got a mouth, it talks. Oh, glory be to God. Ah, when, when you can, when you can do things and you can operate in the church and when you can fornicate and when you can lie and when you can do what you want to do and walk back to church and sit down and something is wrong with what you got. Come on, talk to me. Ah, glory. When you can commit adultery and do what you want to do and walk back to church and sit down and testify, you don't have what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Holy Ghost. Glory. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, some folks don't want to hear this kind of message, but I've got to deliver it anyhow. I'm bringing back the glory. It's time to get back the power of God in the church. Ah, oh, we need to stir back because the, the anointing need to come back in the church for the end time move of God. Because we all have all kind of rottenness moving into the church today. Because people need to understand it is God who sees. That's why the Lord said, I don't see like all men see. Ah, oh, you look at the outward appearance, but I, I see the heart. And I refuse to stay in church and die like a fool. Oh, come on, touch your neighbor and say, don't die like a fool. Glory be to God. Uh, uh, we're right in the place of refuge. Oh, talk to me somebody. That's why when Moses came forth with the laws and he began to read it out and said, God said, thou shalt not. God said, thou shalt not. All of a sudden, the Lord said, if a man kills somebody, his blood shall be shed. Then the Lord, then somebody said, well, Moses, what if I kill somebody by accident? What's going to happen? And the Lord Moses went back to God and said, Lord, what if my brother kills somebody by accident? What's going to happen? And the Lord said, build six cities of refuge. And if a man kill anybody by accident, let him run into the city of refuge. When he gets in there, let him stay in there. Hallelujah. Come on, tell your neighbor, you're in the city of refuge. You better stay right in there. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that Abner killed the brother of Job by accident. And Abner ran into the city of refuge called Shechem. But one day Job went up to the city of refuge. And he said, hey Abner, I know you're in there. Come on out here, Abner, let me talk with you. Abner came out and he said, Abner, I forgive you for killing my brother. My mother forgive you. My daddy forgive you. Come on out here, let us talk. And the Bible says, Abner foolishly stepped out of the city of refuge, came up to Job, and Job pulled his sword and killed Abner. And David followed the coffin of Abner. And he said, Abner, you're not a good warrior. He said, Abner, you die like a fool die. Come on with me, somebody. If could you imagine if a casket lie here and then the power gets up and say, brother, you die like a fool. The family of the deceased would be upset with you. They would say, take him down from being the pastor. But David followed Abner's coffin. He said, Abner, you die like a fool. You were in the city of refuge. Why did you come out? Tell your neighbor, stay in the city of refuge. The church is the city of refuge. It may be rough in there, but I'm staying right there. It may be that they lie on me, but I'm staying right there. Oh, hear me somebody. But through it all, I have learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I have learned to depend upon his word. Tell your neighbor, you won't die. Come on, you will not die. My destiny is greater than my crisis. I don't care what I'm going through. My destiny is greater than my crisis. I'm staying right here. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. So David 
get a new cart and he put on the ark there and David began to dance before the ark of God you can dance in the house of God and you're still out of order come on with me you can shout and the church is out of order come on with me somebody get the Holy Ghost and the assembly is still out of order oh walk with me here David was dancing but he was out of order the music was playing but he was out of order come on the singers were singing but they were out of order come on the apostolic church is out of order hear me somebody there is a wrestling going on somebody said this is my job it's my position everybody fighting in the house of God everybody opposing each other in the house of God it's a satanic spirit but I pass by to tell you if God does not set the house in order there will not be a blessing hear me somebody you can shout you can speak in tongues you can preach but you're out of all it's a new card but get it off the new card we need to get back in order somebody say order Say on the blood of Jesus is against her. Shakota la bohosa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Touch your neighbor and say, We need to get back in order. Hallelujah. We need order. Order in the house. Hear me, somebody. You gotta know how to talk to the king. That's what the preacher was saying last night. You don't use slang language to the king. He is the king. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We can carry on as much as we want to carry. But somebody is out of order right in the house. Good God from glory. I'm feeling something on the inside. Out of order. Mess in the house. When things are out of order. People can do anything and walk in the house and get away with it. Hear me, church of God. When the house is out of order, fornicators sit right in there. When the church is out of order, adulterers sit right in there, preaching on pulpits, and nobody detect them. When the church is out of order, all kind of malice, all kind of war goes on on the pulpit, and nobody to pick it up. Hear me, some. Man, I am delivering it right now. Holy be to God. Anoint me, Holy Ghost. When the house is out of order, all kind of evil device will happen in the house. And there is no discern to pick it up. But I pass by this week to tell you, get it back in order. Or else we're going to die like a fool die. I refuse to sit in the house where the glory is, where the anointing is, where the power is, and die like a fool die. Come on, somebody. But the writer said, when I think of his goodness and all he has done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah thank God for saving me for the right to look and run all around me is sinking sand on Christ the solid rock I stand you gotta stand on Jesus I don't care what folks are doing we gotta stand Oh, glory. 
Somebody say glory. Come on, say glory in the house. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Somebody has lost the anointing. Somebody needs a fire back. Come on with me now. But I'm not going to give you the fire. You need to build your own fire. Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. But who raised Jesus? He raised himself. Come on with me now. He raised himself. Nobody had to raise Jesus. So the Bible said if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in you, it shall quicken. It shall quicken. Oh, come on with me, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's a new cart we're dealing with now. Can I talk with somebody? It's a new car. Mm. Hallelujah. Everybody bringing a new car. Everybody bringing a new policy. Everybody trying to bring in a new principle. But I challenge you tonight. If you ever walk home and kneel down at your bedside, and in your simplicity, say, oh God, take a hold of my tabernacle. Kobosha. Hallelujah. Oh, come on here, somebody. You don't have to waste 2,000 pounds to get it. You don't have to spend 3,000 pounds to get it. But right by your bedside, just talk to Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell the man, as the writer said, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. Oh, Lamb of God, I come, I come. Hear me, church of God. You may not invite me back next year, but let me tell you something. The revival never come with mega churches. Revival was never brought by a choir. Revival was always brought by one man. Oh, talk to me, somebody. It was not brought by a mass choir. It was not brought by a church that has 10,000 people. It was always one man. It was an Elijah upon Carmel that said, The God that answer by fire, let him be the true God. Oh, hear me, church of God. It was a Hezekiah who gathered Israel and said, Let's burn their thought. It was a Gideon who led Israel against the Midianite. Hear me, somebody. It was a John the Baptist who said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Come on. Can God find a man? Can God find a woman who is not concerned about a title, about a position, but say, use me, Lord. Use me, Holy Ghost. Don't make me an elder. Don't make me an evangelist. But just use me, Lord. Koshata. Koboshata. Shetoramahosai. Touch your neighbor and say power. Come on, speak it in the Holy Ghost. Power. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you are too dead, man. You gotta open your mouth. Life is in your tongue. Come on, talk to me. The reason you have not felt the move of God, you are dead. You gotta say glory. You gotta say hallelujah. You gotta say thank you, Jesus. Come on with me. You may not like what I'm saying, but it's the truth anyhow. If you want power, you don't get it by promoting yourself. If God anoints you, you don't have to fight with nobody. Oh, hear me, somebody. Can I preach it? Tell you never don't fight me. Go to God. I didn't give myself the anointing. God gave it to me. You don't have to fight 
upset with me. You don't have to be upset with me. It's my calling. It's my calling. It's my anointing. I pay the price for it. Go pay your price. Oh, hear me, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory. Glory. New God. New God. New God. New God. some of you dress you couldn't walk into my church hello somebody come on talk to me hello somebody yeah I'm preaching it right here I move on I move on I'll give you mystery later on I know that's what some of you used to some of you dress long but it tight so what's the difference It long but it tight. Come on, come on. Come on, say new car, new car. Yeah. Oh, glory be to God. I'm glad some of you can't time it because you didn't lose me. The Holy Ghost loose me already. I can deliver. I don't need your amen to preach God's word. I am loose already. Who the sun set free is free indeed. Oh, hey, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Hear me, somebody. Tell your neighbor, dress right. Yes, it's a part of it. Yes, dress code is a part of it. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Stop showing your legs in church. Cover right, cover yourself right. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Don't show your legs. Keep it for your husband. Hallelujah. Glory. I know some of you can't say amen. Uh, I'll preach it anyhow. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come on, talk to me somebody. And you men dress right to. Come on. Hello, hello, hello. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Get it hung up here now. Ain't nobody want to hear that part. Uh, because you're used to. Don't preach dress. Preach spirit. Come on, come on. But if your spirit is affected, my outer man is affected. Don't let nobody fool you. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. The Bible said, as soon as Rebecca saw Isaac, she came off the camel and veiled herself. Oh, good God from Rome. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor's address right. Yeah. Oh, good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know some of you are going to say, don't bring him back next year. I don't mind who you ask to preach. I'll come up next year. I don't have to come to preach. I just want to be here. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. I know some of you don't want me to come back, but I'm here. And you can't time it. The Holy Ghost looks me. Hey, shut up. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. Oh, 
Rusa. Aleluya. Aleluya. Glory. And the Bible said, there was David dancing before the ark. Come on. I hear dancing. I see dancing in the house. But is the house in order? Come on with me now. Good God. I see new buildings. But is the house in order? Oh, Lord. Come on, Shaka. Glory. Glory. And the Bible said, Use and Ohio was driving the ark upon a new car. But the Bible said, In the midst of the dancing, in the midst of the shouting, the ark stumbled. And Use put forth his hand to touch the ark. No brothers and sisters, one of the reasons why Yusa died, he tried to touch the government of God. The ark in this time was not the presence of God, it was the government of God. For if it was the presence of God, everybody would have the joy. Oh, come on. For in his presence, there are fullness of joy. So the ark at this time did not mean the presence of God, but the government of God. And the government of God should not be upon us. For the Bible said, the government shall be upon his shoulder. Everybody said shoulder. Not on a cart, but on his shoulder. Why? Have you not read in the scripture? Evangelist McCall, where the Bible said that a young man ran to Jesus and he said, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And Jesus turned around and said, Young man, I'm searched toward Jerusalem, but I can't find a place for the government of God to lay. God is searching for a church to lay his government. You don't have to fight to feel the glory. Come on. I don't have to get upset when Minister Kevin preach and I don't preach. Come on, come on. Come on, talk to me, talk to me. Hallelujah. If he preach, I preach. If I preach, he preach. Because we do this in spirit. Come on, come on. Come on. We got folks get upset. Well, you preach three nights. You preach the last two Sundays. Why did you, Ella Powell, ask him to preach two Sundays? And I'm here. Come on, let's go by the process of elimination. You preach last Sunday, I preach this Sunday. Then next Sunday is yours and the other Sunday is mine. And if you ask Elder Wright two Sundays in a row to preach, some folks don't say amen. Because my turn now. Come on, come on. So 
Somebody say amen if you can. When I walk in the room to, to, tonight to get dressed, something spoke in my spirit. God said, I'm going to shake it today. I'm going to shake the house tonight. God's going to shake the house tonight. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why I don't need your amen. I'm just delivering. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. And tell your neighbor, you can't stop me from coming to this church. I come here uninvited or invited. I'm coming right here. This is my church. Hey, glory. Before I was a teacher, I was a worshiper. Some of us just forget one thing. Before you became a preacher, you were a worshiper. Hello, somebody. So now that you're a preacher, you can still remain a worshiper. Hello, hello. Since we become preachers, we don't worship anymore. Preachers don't say hallelujah anymore. Preachers don't say glory anymore. I'm not a worshiper anymore. It was the Levites who lead the people into worship. Check the Bible. Am I right here? It was the Levite who danced and lead the people into worship. Come on with me, somebody. If the pastor is dead, the people dead. If the pastor is alive, the people will be alive. If you got dead ministers, the people will be dead. If the choir is dead, the church gonna be dead. If the musician is dead, the church is gonna be dead. Lively stones. Lively stones. Come on, say yeah. Somebody say yeah. Hallelujah. I am a worshiper. Don't you never say, I'm a worshiper. I don't care about being an evangelist. I don't care about being a missionary. I want to be a worshiper. Hallelujah. Take all the position you want, but leave me with the spirit of worship. Hallelujah. Take all the office you want, but leave me with the spirit of worship. Only worshipers are going to survive this time. Only worshipers are going to survive trials. Only worshipers are going to survive the day of testing. Hear me somebody. For when trouble comes, you can preach your way out. When trials come, you can teach your way out. When situation come, when folks lie in you, come on with me somebody. Somebody will lie in you. But in the midst of the lie, you will walk down the kitchen, turn the stove on, and worship. Oh, come on with me, somebody. I'm washing the dishes, but I'm worshiping. I am vacuuming the carpet, but I will bless the Lord at all times. His way shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, come on with me, somebody. Do I have a witness here? Hallelujah. Come on. Tell your neighbor you are late. You should have lied on me before I got to another level. You are late. You should have criticized me before I became matured. But you are late now. I am already blessed. You are late now. I am already anointed. You are late now. I've crossed over Jordan to Canaan's village. And this is like heaven to me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You can't make me doubt it. I know too much about it. Hallelujah. And I'm staying right in the house and be a worshiper. Come on. Come on. Go. 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 Go.
New card. New card. New card. New I've seen a reason in this day where people can stand up and intellectually speak in tongues. No one on it. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Just mm. stand up. And because the church is out of order, it passed all these people. Somebody's crying. Somebody's crying on the inside of their prison. Somebody who knows the church is crying. Hallelujah. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Peter King, that's not how you know it. 30 years ago. Come on, come on, come on. ago, I began to teach Bible class. In fact, I was teaching Bible class at my church, and I was dealing with how to get close to God, because there is a principle, there's an art. It's not a step, it is a principle. God lays on the principle minister there. This whole Bible is full of principle. Come on. And all things you're praying for, you don't need to pray for it. Just do it. Huh? Come on, come on. And so we began to do it. And while in the midst of the teaching, when the Holy Ghost moved over, I said to the entire church, I said, let's turn to Psalm 51. And everybody began to read. Everybody. From my bishop down, everybody. All the ministers, everybody began to read Psalm 51. Yes. <laughs> Have mercy upon me, O oh God, according to the love and kindness. Everybody, everybody in the church began to vocalize the same thing. And in the midst of everybody reading the evangelist, my God, a sister who never had the Holy Ghost just move up and say, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. By the time she reached up where the lectern was, where I was standing, Mr. Morgan walk over and she said, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And she just said, Heko Shatalabo. She was speaking in tongues and she ran and she hugged everybody in the church. No, nobody had to tell her to hug anybody. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. How can you have Holy Ghost and still hate your brother and your sister? You don't know what I'm talking about. Come on. Come on, brothers and sisters. She hoped everybody in that church that Monday night. It was a Bible class. Bible class. I got scores of people filling Bible class. Just jump up under the word, speak in tongues. Nobody tarry, nobody shake them, nobody doing it. The word, the word. Come on, come on, the word, the word. Somebody say the word. The word, the word, get it. And fill them. Scores of people in my assembly just jump up under the teaching of Bible class. Just get the word, the word, the word, the power of the word, the entrance of God's word. Give it light. These words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, life, life. Oh, glory. And if the word can't do it, no.
no shaking sometimes because some of these folks are full of a stuff on the inside. You know what I'm talking about, LP. They're full of a stuff on the inside. Come on, you need a word to penetrate your soul and loose you. Oh, come on with me, somebody. Hallelujah. You gotta empty yourself for God to step on the inside. Somebody need to empty themselves. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. If one shall chase a thousand and two ten thousand and three a hundred thousand, then tell me, brothers and sisters, why is it that we all sit in here today? Some of you are looking at me strange as to what am I preaching? I'm preaching the word. It is the word. I don't entertain people anymore. Entertainment is all over. It's the entrance of the word that's going to give you power. If you're looking for entertainment, it's the wrong place. I'm here to take you to another dimension. So when I'm going back to Toronto, you can walk back home by yourself. When trouble comes, when storm comes, you can look at the storm and say, I cannot die. I don't care what's around me. I must fulfill my destiny. The reason you're alive is because there's a destiny on the inside of you. Come on, Brother Jonathan. You should have backed in a long time. But you couldn't back out because there's destiny on the inside of you. Many people left church, many hundreds, if I miss my call, before you, but you're still here. And you can look and say, after all I've been through, I still got joy. Come on with me. Yeah, look what I've been through. I still got the Holy Ghost. I still got the anointed. And I'm still here. resuscitation to Eli to keep him alive. Don't die, Eli. Stay right here. And God said, Samuel is right here. He's going to take you across. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Moses brought you out. But the Joshua Come bring you in. Oh. oh God. Come on, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. Saint Luke 1 verse 8, he said. And the child grew. And walked strong in the spirit and was in the deserts until the day of his joy. Don't curse your deserts. Don't curse your wilderness. Amen. Jesus Oh God. Come on, come on, come on. Some of you are cursing your deserts. You don't grow into spilling. You grow 
in your desert. You won't walk strong in church. You walk strong in your desert. Come on. Can I be real to somebody? Come on. It is God empowering you. It is God anointing you. It is God intent to take you to another level. And sometimes he's got to strip everybody around you. Come on, come on. Sometimes even your best friend, he's got to separate you from them in order to take you to another level. And you wonder why some things happen in your life. It's not always the devil. It's purpose. Somebody said purpose, purpose, purpose. Mm, glory. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. It's purpose, purpose. You can't die. You can't die. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, God is not angry with you. He's not angry. It's purpose. Somebody, somebody. Order, order. Can somebody say order? We need order back in the house. The ark is still on a new cart. I wonder who's going to take it off and put it on the show. He may not kill physically like usual. But the church will not be able to give birth. There are some wombs that can give birth to a perfect child. Every time they give birth, the child is retarded. It is based on the womb of that church. If a woman is pregnant and she has certain disease in her body, it is transferred to the baby. The baby is either born deformed or born blind. It's not the baby's fault, it's, it's the mother. The church is like a mother. If the assembly is poisoned on the inside, Then every birth, the baby is poisoned. We need some perfect womb in the church. That takes too much drugs in her system and affects the baby. Some of us have the drugs, some assembly of taking the drugs of hatred, the drugs of blindness. The baby born the same way. God is looking for a perfect womb. Say, God, I'll be that one. I'll be that one. God is searching for somebody. Stop looking to an assembly. Stop looking to an organization. Look to God. David said, I look unto the hills. From whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Who make the heaven and the earth? Hallelujah. Glory. 
There's something that is in the spirit of people. And it is, it is sad that we've come to a place now that folks love you today and hate you tomorrow. They love you for a year, then they hate you the second year. Oh, you better talk to me. Ah, glory. glory be to God. Glory, glory, glory. They smile with you, but they hate you. It stops the revival of a church. Come on, come on. It stops the growth of any church. When a church is not growing, it's time to weep and mourn. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody in the house know what I'm talking about. love to come to church because they can get something at church talk to me talk to me hallelujah when i come to church i need to get something at church i should get a joy i should have something to run back home with and say i'm glad i went to church tonight i've got strength to fight the devil tomorrow at work come on talk to me talk to me talk to me hallelujah Ah, when you've labored all day and you walk to the house of God, you need something. Can I talk to somebody? Hey, glory be to God. When you've labored and have to work among sinners who swear, when you come to the house of God, you need a word. You need something to fill you up. So I'm strengthened to stand and fight the devil tomorrow. Oh, talk to me here. Talk to me here. Glory be to God. Hear me, somebody. Amen. Somebody has got to get into the inner chamber of God. Bible says that like David lightened God as to a shepherd that leads the sheep into green pastures. Uh, not having the sheep feeding from hay, dry hay, but green pastures. And he knows when this pasture is finished, he leads them into green pastures. But if they, you're not following God, you can't lead the people into green pastures. Uh, when the Bible talks about the Grecian women began to dispute about the neglect of, 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 the, of the widows, the apostle said, wait a minute, you better get the deacons to look after that but we've got to give ourselves over to prayer and the word oh come on come on come on hallelujah hallelujah come on come on the time has come that the church needs to move up to another level it's beyond just a show it's beyond just having a choir it's beyond just having a service it's beyond just having a convention everybody's having a revival it's beyond all of that we need an anointing in the house so that when i walk in the press Somebody in the spirit. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Hallelujah. Do you know how many people walk into church depressed and walk back out the same way? Oh, talk to me, somebody. Somebody's having a problem at home and need prayer. They need somebody to walk down and lay hands and empower them and say, stay in the storm. Oh, come on, 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 come on. Hallelujah. We don't even have the gifts. We don't have the gifts working in the church anymore. I've killed out the prophets. We don't want them to operate in the house. Not because I misuse the gift don't mean you kill everybody. If one person misuse it, that's one person. But the gifts must be active in the house. Come on, come on. Uh, we need the gifts back in the house where the discerner can pick up the depressed man. Come on, somebody's depressed, somebody needs prayer. Come on. It's not because a person don't come to church, they want to backslide. No. If you know what some people are going through. Somebody need the spirits of the shepherd. The nature of the shepherd. Feel what you're feeling. I think one of the reasons why God put on flesh so he 
can be touched with our feet. I would say he was in all point tempted as we were. See your sin. But for you to escape something, you gotta leave your coat. Come on, come on, come on. Some things you come out of, man, you gotta leave your coat and run. You don't need somebody to condemn you when you come out of that. You need somebody to condemn. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's amazing because sometimes some of us, you know, uh, after we have matured, we have forgotten 